Hi guys, welcome back to Debris Day. Today on Debris Day, we're gonna make a file guide. Let's go. So guys, I'm about halfway through my sword build when you can see the, the links up here somewhere to the sword build. And what I've realized is that I've done all of the sanding, pretty much ready to etch, here it is, ready to go. But these parts here are not straight. Not straight at all, especially on this side, it, they're miles out. Um, so what I want to do, there you go, they're, they're miles out. So what I want to do, I want to make a file guide to make sure that these two bits here, you can see they're, they're miles out if you put my two fingers. Um, so these two bits here are level. And I also want to make sure that these two bits here are level, they're, they're quite a bit out. So I'm going to do a video on making the file guide. I never made one before, but I roughly know how it works. Um, I'm going to make that file guide and I'll post this a week after, but I'm going to make it today, use it, and then complete that, uh, that cutting in of that handle part prior to etching my blade on the life blade video. So they're kind of intertwined. So I've got a load of um, 1080 steel here. This is a massive bar. Um, I got this for another project, but I'm going to use it. I'm going to cut a cut, uh, piece off here. I think I'm going to cut it in half and then I'm going to um, tap, I think is the correct, correct term, tap some holes on both sides, join it together, make sure it's flat, then use this as a file guide. So that's the idea. Don't know if it's going to work, but uh, let's give it a try. So first things first, let's get cutting. So I don't know how much of this I'm going to cut. Um, I don't want to go excessively. Um, I'm going to use a triangle to make sure we're nice and square. kind of feels about right. Right, so I've drawn a line on my massive piece of steel. I'm gonna cut that on my little saw here, take my time cutting that. I'm gonna try and cut that down the center as well. So let's get cutting. And there we go, two pieces cut in half. I want to talk about this, uh, this oldie cutter just for a moment. Um, when I first got this, I was like super impressed, I could cut loads of box cuts, blah, 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 and I didn't really understand how good it was. Um, then the blade, um, it got, got blunt, and then it wouldn't cut, and I thought, well, a load of rubbish. Um, I'm gonna come back on those, those views. Since I've changed the blade, and I can do a link uh, below to where I got the blades from, for cutting steel slowly, carefully, is absolutely superb. So it is a good device for cutting. I do mount it a little bit dodgy, so it's in my vice, and yes, I use a clamp just to power it on, so there must be, I know there's some table devices you can get for these, but anyway, an oldie um, bandsaw cutter, absolutely brilliant. Portable bandsaw cutter, so if you need one, I'd recommend one. Anyway, back to this. Um, we've got these two pieces um, stuck on the top of each other. They're almost square to each other, which is uh, super duper. Um, I think what I'll do next is I'll use the belt sander and square all of these up, make sure they're lovely and square. And then I'm gonna tap and uh, tap, and uh, tap, I keep saying tap and die, tap some holes into them, ready to put some bolts through. Um, and then that'll uh, be used to tighten it up. Um, so let me do that. Let me uh, get on the belt grinder and let me sand these, uh, these edges down so they're all nice and square. So for this process, I'm gonna use one of my one, two, three blocks. Um, I'll do a link for them below if I remember. Um, you can use these to square up uh, in three directions as the name suggests. Absolutely brilliant, brilliant devices. So I'm gonna take my piece of metal. I'll make sure they're square to the one, two, three block. Make sure it's square to one, two, three block, and then I will sand against that. So therefore, we'll have a nice square file guide. Maybe I'm a bird following the seasons. This is what I've learned. I'm different for a reason. Okay, a bit of grinding later, and we now have two very, 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 very flat pieces of metal. So this is on my granite slab, which we use quite regularly. 
Um, as you can see, there's no gaps between them. So what I'm going to do now is clamp them together, then get them on the um, pillar drill and drill the holes ready for the tapping. Okay, let's talk about where we are. Um, I've drilled a hole on the top one here, just slightly bigger than the bottom one. So then when we take our M5 unit, it just slips in there. And I've now got to top out, uh, tap out the bottom part so it then accepts it, and we're nearly there. Um, I've also put some marker on this end so I know which end lines up with, 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 it, with which end for the moment. So I'm going to separate them off now. Um, I'm going to get my tap out take this top bit off, start tapping the bottom part and make sure that the M5 bolts fit in there. So take this top bit off, tap the bottom bit, put the M5 bolts in there, then put it together and see if it works. Let's do that. We'll do this side first. A little bit of one on there. Then we use our tap, which looks like that, and start tapping this out. The trick, so I understand, I've only done this once or twice, is to try and keep it level. You can put these into a drill bit, which is what I've done before, but you've got more control if you do it this way. And it's through. Just go through a little bit more and undo it. Just take a little. There we go, and that now tightens up lovely. And we'll use this just to check. That now tightens. So lovely bit of a uh, tapping there. So I'll just bring you a bit closer so you can see. So for those people who've never used one of these before, and I'm sure there's a few people out there. There we go. So you twist. And you take it back a little bit. Twist. Once it gets going, once it starts to bite, There we go. It's quite difficult to do it one-handed, but bear with me. It's starting to cut. I'll just finish this one off. And then we'll take our bolt and make sure it works. Take our Allen key. That then fits in there lovely. There we go. How as nice as that. And then we'll do a final test. This all needs cleaning up in a moment. If we take our top piece, black to black, which is that way, put it through the hole, into the other hole. That matches. Take this side, through the hole. That should match to the tap. There we go. And there we have, it comes through the bottom hopefully. A nice tight file guide. Just do that up. Make sure that goes really nice and tight all the way down. And I'm going to just smooth it off and finish it off. And we have successfully made a lovely file guide. Okay, here we go. We've now finished polishing them. As you can see, okay, it's, it's actually just two small, simple bars with a hole in it and a tap tool on the other side. Um, all nice and shiny. Um, what we'll do, we'll pop this one on top of this one. Uh, got to get the right way around. It looks like it's that way. Um, I will now put in the, uh, I'll put in the, uh, the bolty things. Just do that up. Do this one up. What you can see now is that we have a very simple file guard. It's very pretty. You might as well do things properly if you're going to do it properly. So I'm going to just hold it like this so you can see a picture of it. A nice file guard. So I'm now going to use this on my knife and I'm going to use the file guard to measure out the, uh, the handle, get it all nice and square. I can finish the blade. So guys, that's the end of the making the file guard. Hope you found it useful. I've taken you through all of the steps. Some of the videos out there don't take you through the steps. It's making a tool for a tool. So I need that tool in order to finish my knife. Anyway, that's it for this week, guys. Hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you next week on.
Give me a stay. Cheers, guys. Bye.